Okay. I get this question all the time. How do I get more under booty? And this happens from growing the overall mass in your glutes. And the only way to do that is knowing which exercises lengthen the lower subdivision of the gluteus maximus. We are going to show you guys that today. The supplements we are taking today, you got your peach gains pre-workout to get her going in this workout. And she's gonna mix that with creatine. Creatine comes unflavored, so you guys can either do it with your pre-workout. I would start with half a scoop if you're new to pre-workout, or you can just put them um, together with your BCAs and drink it during your workout. But you wanna drink your creatine during your workout using your peach gain shaker bottle. And here we go, we're gonna take you guys through it. Again, creatine, this will help you guys build that overall mass in your glutes. If you're really wanting to see that under booty growth, this is the magic sauce. So the first one out of those six under booty exercises that we repeat every week elevated sumo squats you guys see me do these all the time these are the squats for the booty so we got the elevation here um let's get a little wider yeah there you go so where you're going to get most of that stretch in your under glute is at the bottom when you're creating that hip flexion down here uh-huh so working for that deficit there you go and like i've told annie before when you're working for that depth getting the hips under the knee. You don't want to butt wink. So if you feel like you are butt winking, you can get a little deeper. You were doing fine. Then you'll open up your toes and your knees and that allows your hips to sit deeper. It gives your, your hips room. If you feel like you're getting stuck and you're butt winking every time. Good. Or you just don't have that hip mobility yet. Start working at it. You not you might not be able to get that deep right away if it's your first time doing these for the first, let's just say a couple weeks, three weeks you'll need to work at them. These look really good though. There you go. So I can see her butt wink a little bit right there, but that's fine if it's not hurting her back. And then what you can do there is bring your chest, yeah, bring your chest forward even more, uh-huh. And it'll help with that butt wink. So get more parallel to the ground. There you go. You see how she got that chest more parallel to the ground? That will help. But this is where you're getting the stretch in the glutes, is at the bottom of the squat. So it's just working for that depth. Like I said, you might not be able to get it at first, but just work at it. We'll do these one to two times a week, three sets, 10 to 15 reps, and then just trying to up our weights on these with the kettlebell and then an elevation. Again, you don't wanna be here. This could be too narrow. Sometimes you gotta open it up a little more, open up the toes, open, open up the knees. So then you can sit all the way back on your heels. You need to sit everything back on your heels. Yeah, like that, uh-huh. Okay, so the stationary box step ups, this is not the same thing as your normal 90 degree box step up where you're stepping here and you're pushing up for your quad. Here, we're gonna get into a deficit, creating that hip flexion to stretch the under booty. And I would set up a bar here, something that you can just hang on to. Here we go. So, and use the soft box. So then you can dig your heel into there. Yeah, there you go. So what I want you to pay attention to her knee, this is the most important part. Yes, good. Your knee is not coming too far back with you. It's not coming too far forward. So you're not going here with your knee and you're not bringing it back. You're keeping it neutral with your shin. So then all that weight sits on that heel. Yep. And then as soon as she drops this hip under the knee, she can get back up. Notice how close she's keeping that toe. As soon as your toe hits the ground, just drop this knee. Don't continue to reach back. That's when you're gonna bring this knee back or get too close, that's when you're gonna go here. Just once it sits, or once your toe drops, hits the ground, just drop your back knee, and you'll be in the perfect spot every time, just like she is. Really good, and then we'll show you guys her other leg. But notice how she brings her chest over her knee. Beautiful. You guys will feel all this dig in your under glutes, over towards the corner. These are perfect. And then from there, once you guys get the hang of these, do them with body weight first, because they are tough. But once you do get the hang of them, you guys can grab a kettlebell, one dumbbell, add some weight, and then you'll really start to feel that burn. Good. All right, let's switch. But when we do body weight, we'll do 15. Whenever I put a weight in their hand, we'll do like 10. You can go for 15. It's just a lot harder. These are really tough, and you will feel so much burn in that under booty. Good. I would elevate it with two if you can, just a little higher. So then you get you create more um, hip flexion when you're coming down. So this is a curtsy lunge, elevated curtsy lunge. You're going to come here and you're going to come across, drop the knee. This is where you're getting that stretch in the glute. OK, 
okay and you can hold on to something i'll i'll uh, show you guys what i mean by that because these can get a little hard with coming across yourself you can hold on to something here and have a weight here so we'll show you guys that with annie okay so on the curtsy lunges i always tell the girls you want to point your toe just inside so the foot that you're on i would point it a little inside so your knee stays aligned with your toe when you come across like this okay so again, I gave her this little stick just to hold on to. It's not going to, it's not going, she's not going to use it to pull herself up. Just to hold on to for balance. Boom. Yeah. Now the whole point of having this deficit, get your knee under the elevation. That's where you're sinking your hip into a deficit under your knee. Stretch the under booty. These are so good. We're going to do 10 with this weight. Uh-huh. 10 and 15. And we'll do these once a week if we're not doing these with the sumo squats um, or the hip thrusts on our anterior and glutes day. So on Monday. Yeah, these are so good though. And then you guys can even, once you get good at these, you can elevate with a higher bench too. And then you get even, you create even more hip flexion, even more stretch in the under glutes. So good, good. So yeah, kettlebell, dumbbell, and then you can hold something because it's hard to balance on these, especially as you up the elevation. And that's what I recommend you guys do. Those are good though. Super. And always, 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 always focus on your knee, staying neutral with your shin. When you're coming here, when you're going straight back, whenever you're squatting, the knees need to stay neutral with the shins, not here. Elevated hip thrust. I'm going to show you guys with just the band first. I, I love to use these for a superset. High reps, stretching those glutes, getting that pump. We're going to do feet here on a bench and then we got the bc box here that's where her back's going to be so you just got to find something to elevate one higher than the other notice how her back is lower than the bench where her feet are right so you're gonna put this guy on though you got the peach gains black band here medium size heavy resistance all my bands are heavy resistance because then they last longer and you need heavy resistance for bigger booty right annie yes all right so we're gonna get a wider base all right, let me make sure she, and then you got to make sure you just got enough distance. Let's see. Sports bra line. So, and then you want to make sure you're rocking on your heels, right? Yeah. Let's see it. So, and then the whole point of having this band here is to resist the band. So keep those knees wide, resist the band. Yeah. Then you'll feel that resistance in your upper and lateral glutes while you're working for your hip flexion, getting the length, the stretch in the glutes. Okay. Yeah, yeah always. Better always you can go wider yeah there you go you're never wrong going wider just too narrow can be wrong now you're gonna get deep 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 especially when you got a band on you might want to go a little wider just because that'll help you keep your knees open good so notice how deep she gets that's where all that stretch in the glutes is getting or is happening right all that under glute activation happens at the bottom which is why we create the elevations all these exercises I'm showing you today are going to have elevation so that you get into a deficit. You create hip flexion, which is where the glutes lengthen. Good. And then when you get up here, right, that's contracting the upper booty. Like my last video, I showed you on the upper booty, the top shelf. Beautiful. But we'll do 20 of these. So let's just say we're supersetting them with barbell hip thrusts, elevated sumo squats. You're going to superset them with a loaded compound. Good. Just like that. And then we'll show you guys a version. If you want to add more resistance, you're going to do the band and the peach and hip thrust belt. So now we got the hip thrust belt. Like I said before, whenever you guys use the hip thrust belt, make it nice and tight. Make the straps tight to where the dumbbells sit right off the edge of your hips. Okay. We got 10 pounds going on here. So keep it a little lighter as you guys attempt this on the dual elevated hip thrust. The peach gain sign is always facing away from her face. And then the dumbbells will just hang down, right? That's why you keep them nice and tight, tucked in. Ready? So now she's got the band and the hip thrust belt. Let me fix this band yeah. just a little bit. There you go. And if it's too much, just do the hip thrust belt or just do the band, right? But here's something I wanted to show you guys. If you're getting to the point where you're like, I want more, or you're already at that point where you can do more, add the hip thrust belt. You'll just hold on to it like that. Get it nice and comfortable on your hips. Then you don't got to worry about it. And now you're performing the movement, feeling the activation at the bottom, and then contracting the glutes at the top. Beautiful. Using your peach gains, hip thrust belt. RDLs, 
another good one, very similar to your good mornings, but the load is here on your hands, right? So yeah, your, your base is fine. Shoulder width apart is about where you wanna be. Okay, now that was too deep. What I'm gonna do is have her stop sooner at her shins and create more knee bend. There you go, more hip flexion. So how you're going to do that is first, again, like the good mornings, your hips are pushing back. You're not bending your knees to get there. Uh, yeah, there you go. As you push your hips back, you can then continue to, to bend your knees to create more hip flexion. You can even get, you can do it sooner again. Go ahead. Yeah, you see how she just worked for that? You guys saw a great example of her working to create more hip flexion. There you go. So, and the reason why I'm telling her to stop mid shin first, that will help put in your head but that's as far as you need to go. So then you need to work on creating more hip flexion through your knees and your hips like that. And then her chest is getting parallel to the ground. These are so good. And I'm going to show you guys a trick that I have them do to help create more hip flexion. Good. And it will just train your mind and knowing where to feel that hip flexion because you want to feel like you're sitting without knee bending, right? You want to feel like you're sitting on something without your knees bending first coming here everything stays back. But notice how it's just stopping her mid chin now. She doesn't even have to think about it because it's the motion that's happening back here with her knees and her hips, right? Okay. And making sure you shave your legs on RDL. Shave, shave, shave. No, don't let the dumbbells come out here because that'll just hurt your lower back. Beautiful form. Now we're gonna show you guys a trick. Her feet with these flat 10 pound plates because I wanted the back of her leg to be a little higher than the bench. It started like right here at her leg pit. I wanted it just right on her upper calf yep so the whole point of this so make sure you have a heavy enough bench so that you can push your weight back so what's what it's doing is helping her training her mind to sit you see how now she's just sitting naturally like she doesn't even have to think about it all she's got to do is push her hip her weight back and then those those dumbbells are going to stop where they need to every time mid chin like that she can't go any deeper without falling back right good so good. Notice how she's just sitting back. Now she's creating even more hip flexion than you just saw in the video before. Yeah. And the clip before, she had to slowly work at that through her set. Now it's just happening automatically. So if you guys start to train at these and you just get that feeling of sitting back, you will always create more hip flexion. And then once you wanna do it, you and you can continue doing it with the bench. You don't have to stop. Right. But once you start to get up that way and you want to use a barbell, it'll be hard to do this with a bench. But it's a good way to train your mind and creating more hip flexion, because that's the whole point of these RDLs is to feel it in your under glutes. If your legs are too, if your if your legs aren't bending enough and they're and they're more straight than they are bent, you're going to have a lot more hamstring activation. As soon as you bend here and you create more hip flexion, you're taking that load off the hamstrings and you're putting it on the under glutes. Versus here, hamstring, here, under glutes. Okay. All right, so the good mornings. Saving these for last, because these are my favorite for stretching the under glutes. If you get super heavy on these, you've got a lot of under glute activation going on. So, yeah, there you go. So the, you notice how the first movement back was her hips, right? Where I see a lot of people do these wrong is their your first movement is your knees. If you, if you move with your knees first, you're just gonna turn these into a squat. You gotta push your hips back and continue to push your hips back, getting your chest parallel to the ground. Back, 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 and then you create the hip flexion and then your knees start to bend. It's the hips. Keep pushing the hips back. And then notice how her knees are naturally going to bend as she works for her hip flexion. Shins and knees are staying neutral. This is such beautiful form. All the weight is back on her heels. Look at her knees never come forward because she's not bending in a squat to get her hips back first, right? Her first movement is her hips coming back and then they continue working her chest to parallel. Now you might not have the flexibility at first to get your chest parallel to the ground. That's your goal though. You wanna get your chest parallel to the ground because then you get more glute, under glute activation. These are so good. She's improved in these so much. And then also not getting too high with your hips because you don't wanna create that arch in your back. That's what she was having a problem with. Good. And what helps that is bringing the chest more parallel to the ground. If you feel like you're arching, you're leaving, you might be leaving your upper body too high as your hips get ahead and continue to come back. I know I say you guys want to drink this during your workout, 
But if you don't, and you just want to drink it in your post-workout protein shake, you guys can do that too. It's not flavored. So you can put it in your vanilla or chocolate peach gains, vegan pea protein. This is the protein you guys need to be drinking. If you're drinking whey protein, dairy-based protein, it's going to hurt your stomach. That's why you guys are complaining about bloatiness and stomach pain. This is what you need to drink as a woman. Ladies, once you grow your booty, you won't care about what your hip dips look like. I see way too many girls hating on their hip dips nowadays, which is the most beautiful part of the booty. My clients can relate until they grew their booty. They never worried about them again. Hip dips are how we tell the difference from a fake to a real booty in today's world. Next week, we are gonna show you guys a routine you guys can do to help build around your hip dips and shape them and make them pretty. Now, the booty journey can be really hard if you're doing it alone. That's why now we have a private community that you guys can join with the Cooper girls and me and doing it together. So if you guys are interested in that, stop building alone and do it with us. Click the link in the description to get inside our new private community that we just launched. I'm so excited. All the girls are having fun in there and you guys can now build your booty together. I will see you guys next week on how to build around your hip dips with Annie. Peace.